If you use GitHub to version control your projects, one thing you'll quickly find is that there's a maximum file limit to what you can upload. So that limit is currently 50 megabytes, and I can understand them having this limit because people could take advantage of their service, they could upload huge media files, they could upload entire movies, and take advantage of the free hosting you can get at GitHub. However, you'll find that when you work on large web projects, especially ones that are using large database, it's very common for the database file size to go over 50 megabytes and even into the gigabytes. One recent project I was working on was called Stock Streaks, and we had one table in this database which was 20 million rows. It contained a history of all of the different uh, stock market trading prices. And I wanted to have this under version control. I wanted to upload it to GitHub and then clone it from my Mac so I would have um, access to it locally. However, this is not currently possible with GitHub. When you upload it, you're going to get a message back from GitHub. It's not going to allow it and you're not going to be able to successfully push that commit to your repo. However, I'm going to show you a workaround in this tutorial. So if you look at my uh, root web folder here, uh, we have a typical Laravel installation here. However, I've added one custom folder which co is called backups. And I also have another folder which is called backup parts. Because what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to um, export that uh, entire database uh, it should come up to around 2 gigabytes. I'm going to export that into this backup folder and then we're going to use the split command in Linux to break that uh, 2 gigabyte file into a bunch of different files that are 40 megabytes. And then I'm going to move those 40 megabyte files into this backup parts folder. And this backup parts folder is going to be put under version control. However, the backups folder holding uh, the huge SQL file that's 2 gigabytes I am going to ignore that using git, using the .git ignore file. So if we take a look at this git ignore, you'll see I've added here slash backups. So anything within the backups folder is not going to be under version control. And that's where I'm going to put the 2 gigabyte file. However, the backup parts folder is going to be under version control. And we're going to put all of those uh, smaller part files within there. So the next thing I'm going to do is just cd into my backups folder. And if we take a look at the contents here, you'll see there's nothing in it. So what we need to do is we need to do a MySQL dump in order to dump the database into an SQL file. So let's type in the syntax to do this. I'm going to type MySQL dump dash u and then my username, which is forge, and then dash p. You can type your password here, but I'm just going to leave it off and type it right after this one. So dash p and then the name of the database I want to export is called stock streaks and I'm going to pipe the output of that um, into the current date, so 2014 06-25.sql and I'll hit enter. So now it's going to ask for my command for my password. I'm going to paste that in there and hit enter. So after you hit enter, if you just see this block right here and you have no other response and it seems like it's not working, it actually is working. It's executing all of those SQL commands one by one. So just give it some time to finish. So that's finished right now. If I type something like ls-lah, uh, we can take a look at that and we can see the size of it. The h gives you human readable output. You'll see this file is 1.7 gigabytes. So the next thing we want to do is we want to use the split command of Linux in order to break up this huge file into, into smaller files. Uh, we can just check that we have split installed on our computer just by typing man split. And if you see the man pages for that, um, you know you have it. You can press Q to exit that. So we know that GitHub's maximum is 50 megabytes. So what I'm going to type here is I'm going to type split dash dash bytes equals 40m for megabyte. The file I want to split is this 2014-06-25.sql. Just fix that little typo right there. And the next thing that you want to put after this is what you want to prefix all of the different part files into. I'm just going to type part and then hit enter. So that's finished right now. I'm just going to take a look at all of them now. And we'll see all of these different part files here. It starts with part AA, part AB, part AC. Um, if we just look at the top of part AA, I'm going to type head part AA. 
Let's look at the top of that and just make sure it's the top of the MySQL file and you can see it is the first one. Uh, we have the headers here, server version, etc. So you'll see we have all of these different files now alphabetically. Part AA is the uh, first part of this SQL file and then if we go to the bottom, the last one, part BO, will be the end of the file and we can see each of those is 40 megabytes uh, which is within the limitations for uploading to GitHub. So the next thing I want to do is I want to move all of these different part files um, into that other folder I created which was called backup parts. So what I'm going to type is I'm going to type mv part and then a star to grab all of the files that, ha that are at least beginning with part. And then I'm going to move that back a directory into b. I'm going to hit tab twice and I know it's called backup parts so dash and then tab again and I'm going to move all of them into this directory. I'm going to hit enter and that should be finished. If I take another look at this directory we'll see nothing's there. Uh, we can go back a directory and let's go into backup parts CD backup parts and if we take a look inside backup parts uh, we'll see all of those files here. So I'm going to type git status to just to see the status of my repository right now and you'll see we have modifications to the .git ignore and we have some untracked files within backup parts. This is we, what we want. We want backup parts to be under version control. However, you'll see there's no mention of the backups file because if I do again a cat to that git ignore file, you'll see that in the .git ignore file um, we have the backups folder being ignored. So that one had the really large file, 1.7 gigabytes, um, but that's not going to be under version control. So the next thing I want to do is just add all of these to version control. I'll do that with git add period. So that took a little while to run, but it's finished now. I'm going to type git status again uh, to check the status. So git status shows us that we've added all of those new files from the backup parts file, as well as the changes to the .git ignore file. So I'm going to make a commit now. I'm going to type git commit dash m, and we'll just say add backup parts files. And I'm now going to push this up to GitHub and see if I get any errors. So git push. It took a few minutes to upload everything to GitHub. However, it seems that it's gone off with no problems. I'm just going to type a git log to make sure of that. And you'll see we added all the backup parts files. So that's good. So the next step for me would be to open a new tab here and to do a git pull. Pull down uh, that last commit from GitHub and then go to all those different parts files and merge them into a single file uh, which could be imported into my database. However, just in the interest of saving time, uh, let's just continue to do this on the production server. So remember we had all of our parts files within backup parts. So let's cd into that folder and we'll take a look at what we have in here. So what we want to do now is merge these all into a single SQL file and we can do that by typing cat, cat star and then we're going to pipe it into a file. Um, let's just give it the date. Let's call it 2014.06.25.sql and let that run. So because all of these different files are in alphabetical order, um, this is going to work. It's going to, part AA is going to be the top of the SQL file and then the last one, part BO, is going to be the bottom. It seems that that's finished now. Um, we'll see this file right here. Let's just check the size of it. We can do that by typing ls-lahg. I think we should be able to see the size here. Yep, we'll see that that's 1.7 gigabytes and all of those earlier ones we split before are 40 megabytes. So the next thing we need to do is we need to import this into our database. I have MySQL running here and I have a database called test created to import this into it. So the syntax for doing that, we're going to type mysql-u and then the username and then dash p. Uh, the next prompt is going to ask for my password. And the database we're importing into is called test and I'm going to pipe into that uh, the SQL file. Hit enter here. So it seems that that's all finished importing now. So I'm just going to pop over to mysql and I'm going to use that test database and then I'm going to type show tables and we do see the three different tables in there. Now this summaries table should have about 20 million different rows um, so let's just make sure about that. I'll type select count one from summaries 
and we'll see that it does have all of the rows here. So what we've covered in this video is how you can take a large SQL file and you can split it into smaller files uh, and also specifying the size that you want each of those files to be. And then once you're left with all of those different files, um, how you can merge them back into a single SQL file and then import it into your database.